we get started. I've got uh, I'm say 1800 hours, but six o'clock. And uh, welcome, I was warned to everyone. Me. So, I surprised, but uh, any thing to be added to the agenda? Yeah, oh, those three items in the top corner there. Yeah. Oh, right here. Yeah. Yeah. So, we want to take those on. Well, we got to the fire department here. We might as well go to the fire department first and uh, we won't hold them up. Anybody object to that? No. Okay. So, we're we'll here with adding Krista Jones bonus discussion, Smith Triangle parcel, and Jen authorizing to sign yep. to the agenda. Okay, so uh, number two is Hyde Park uh, Town Fire Department and yes, uh, Fire Chief Election thing. 2023 and Ryan yeah. Nolan. Somehow. Um, yeah, they see the best signature. Yeah. We'll get to the last meeting. Okay. Yeah. Someone needed, you know. All right. <laughs> So as I mentioned before, congratulations on on that. And I guess we're gonna the board has to vote to approve uh, uh, the nomination. I'll nominate Ryan. I don't know why we have to do this, but fire chief or high fire fire department. I second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining. I have to abstain. Yep. Yep. Okay. I think the ayes have it. The state's not the way. Congrats. Good night. Thank you, I guess so. It's so all right. Yeah. That, was, that was going along with trying to get out here by 20 after. <laughs> okay. And then the tr the fire truck. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we looked into one of the three main guys. You have to get a little closer to the mic. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Right. So Ron and I were talking about the 911 sign thing. And they haven't increased the line item for since they did it. And what, what I take, 450 to 500 left, we got to do. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's kind of what I was expecting, but it's still not a small number when you multiply it by the increasing metal cost. Yeah. And delineator signs, they're like 60 bucks a piece. <laughs> <laughs> the number sign? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, the no. sign poles. Yeah. Oh, the I mean, both. Oh, just the poles. <laughs> Is that the like, correctional center got out of making it? No, that's, no, that's, that's where we get them. Where? Correctional center. You sure? Huh? I heard they this way did away with that. Yeah, we yeah. got them there this last time. I don't know if they've done it. I don't know if they've still got an inventory or stuff like that, but they're thinking about shutting down. Oh, they are. Yeah, so you it, might want to grab on them. <laughs> yeah, right. Because we put, we just did an order this summer, and that's where we got them from. Because mm -hmm. they're going to be they're going to be gone. I understand. Well, the, I mean, the on time signs and designs and Barry sells them too. It'll give you a rough idea what the difference in cost is. I call them. Yeah, uh, Ryan and I were talking about the number of years it takes to get um, with the inflationary cost if the number goes down every year, and whether or not uh, the board had wanted to put more money into it. So we, when we got to the 450 to 500 and multiply it by, you know, those numbers, it gets large very quickly. So do you want to accelerate it either through the budget or through ARPA money was our basic question or just keep picking away at the $3,000 a year and we'll probably have a perpetual program <laughs> of sign installations due to inflation. What did you say? It's tripled in cost? <laughs> oh, we, we were doing really well in the beginning 10 years right. ago, basically, and now it's, it's, it's a drop in the bucket each year. So even that 500, I don't think they're doing more than... 60 signs maybe or something like that so can we change the post style can we change the post style yeah like right now you're using square tubing right no you can you can yeah it's hard it's hard um to change it too much because it's really meant to be semi-permanent so you 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 cheap you cheap it up on that post and like a mailbox if we can right. if it works mm -hmm. yeah that's the best if option the post idea then I didn't know if that square tube and the two by two is, but I don't know. I can, I can ask. Yeah. How much do the signs cost? I have a post on a 60. It's by the square foot. Yeah, they, I think 20 something for each panel. For the sign. Yeah. For the sign. I think at last, we bought some delineated air posts a little while ago for Lafayette. I think they're like 60 bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. How, how many you got left to do? The other thought around 450 to 500 is going to be estimate today. How come Blackberry Lane wasn't done but Sunder Road was? Is it because I'm driving? They well, they haven't done this side road by Sunder Road. Okay. They just did Sunder Road. Okay. They, they still got all the side roads on Sunder Road. They got Brook Road and Kitchener Gulf Road, Garfield. Oh, yeah, that is a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's over here. So what one option is to make the town budget go to zero and shift money to the, you know, making an expenditure from the ARPA money to reduce your current budget, but also to let highway, or, I'm sorry, the fire volunteers that are doing this project know that they could accelerate it because that, that money is not tied to a budget. It's, it's tied to the project. So if they get more volunteers, they could do it faster. If they don't get volunteers, they, they'll go slower. And that's the only way I could think of without sort of spiking the budget to get it done quicker is to shift the money source to ARPA. And that's that would be a good thing for ARPA. I mean, what you say? I mean, well, it improves emergency services, you know, response, which is part of the ARPA goals is to make, you know, help, you know, for health and safety type improvements that are long term. And th those signs are relatively long term. So <clears throat> so what's the what's what would be the total price if we bought? Or fifty or five hundred joints. Really. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're still looking at thirty or forty thousand to finish. I was gonna say, yeah, forty. Thirty. Yeah. Thirty grand or forty. Yeah. The more the more mailboxes that they could use, the better, obviously, with those post costs. Oh, right. But I mean, and even if you did do thirty grand, I mean, it's still gonna take us yeah. a couple of years to do it. Right. <laughs> so maybe we do a 
like that. that. We'll do it. Or even double the budget this year and just see what that how that helps. You know, you can give an additional 30 grand to ARPA this year. Yeah, that's I think that's what I was thinking is say, okay, well, we're gonna we'll go to zero in the operating budget, but the board can appropriate six thousand out of ARPA and see how it goes. Give the give the firefighters some flexibility to put some more signs up quicker and see if they can accomplish that. You didn't even service people to do it. Well, we yeah, did well, well, we we did mention maybe setting up a date like on a Saturday and putting it out there, like on front porch forum. Anybody want to volunteer on the day to help us put some signs up? We haven't mentioned that. good luck. We have thought of that. Yeah. yeah. Is that part of the like a, the new permit? Like if somebody draws a new permit, they got to supply their own. Yeah, that's already it's already in the ordinance that you guys adopted that the home, homeowners are responsible. Right for new ones, but yeah. this was yeah, brought yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long? How long we've we been doing it? Wrong? Ten years? God, yeah, I think so. I think it's, it's about ten. Yeah. You would, you would think you would think you set one person down the fire station and put this on front porch for them and everything, that the people that come down to the fire station pick them up on a Saturday and put it up nine to twelve or nine. To Two or whatever, and get them put up. I wouldn't mind put my. I did put my one up. I didn't put mine up. I'm thankful that Ryan did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Put my own. Yeah, I think the. I think Roland. I think the idea was that with the fire department doing it, you get consistent placement for their purposes, oh, and that that was our. What that was our other goal was to make sure that the signs didn't go up. You know. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah. Okay, whatever. Yeah, no, it's just it was just one of the things that we tried to oh, do is just I have it. You're on the same side of the road too as the house. It's supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. All those, all those little issues. Yeah. So, do we need a motion to? Uh, we have to think about because we were talking about six thousand. It was like really the depression stuff just gone off the name of. So it ain't yeah, been ten years. Ten and a half. No, because it was done while I was on the board. I've been on board seven. Oh, that's probably been seven, just that then. It was a year or so after that. Yeah. I remember when we voted on that. Was it. Yeah, you could it's in the town report when we started, but if you can have a motion to approve George Cook, I mean George Cook, which is a good it's a good thing. You want to make a motion? Know. So we what is the most exactly? to reduce our budget by three thousand dollars to code it to zero make a motion and then we are going to take six thousand dollars from arpa second, second. <laughs> <laughs> any more discussion all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. any be opposing abstaining okay <clears throat> we want to see how far six thousand dollars go when we do okay Get like, Might be able to make a donation to you. I'll keep busy. I got a bunch of you. Mm-hmm. Comes in 16 foot lengths, so I won't fire on our end, but you got it. We got class on shop if you come. Mm-hmm. I've known like two months ago. I, I know we just get right around like a whole dumpster full and move from Lindenville. <laughs> oh, did you see that draft article of what? Uh... Oh, they're going to put in for the truck. I did see that. Yeah. You did see it? Okay. Do we need so, to? So, just to be on record, yeah, Ryan, tell us what you're doing about K2. Just where I made that little arrow. Just show it beyond that. The assistant chief and the lieutenant spot that are open right now come February, the first Tuesday of February, whatever the date is. We're going to have another election to put in two spots. All right. Yeah. They also are going to put their name and let their interest up. On the board, on the board, and then they they run in that first Tuesday. We're going to have an election for those two spots only. Now it's, if I remember right, you got to be on for a year before you vote. Yeah, yeah, and you got to be on probation, which is a year. Yeah. So those didn't get didn't get filled when uh, elections. That would I pass? Okay. Well, because the voting goes one, three, five this year. Okay. These are two year terms. Oh, okay. Next year is two, four, and six. 
Okay. No, because that was two, I moved to one. Caleb was four, moved to three. Oh, so you messed it all so up. Now we got an open spot for the next, or it's the one year term until next January. Gotcha. In the way of bylaws read, you got to put a letter of interest. Okay. The state you're going to run for that position. And so it's given the time for the guys to put their letters up. Gotcha. Okay. And then the first two would be in. And everybody at that meeting the other night, and that's when we discussed it, and that's when we decided. <clears throat> so everybody knows. Yep. Okay. Maybe they held up the first Tuesday in February? Yeah. I don't know, the seventh or something. I don't know that date is, but that first Tuesday. So do we need to discuss that draft article? So is there anything that we can do for you that you see or jumping in that spa or you need or I don't think so. Not right now. A new truck. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well that's that's being plucked. That's that's being worked. I, I saw not our I saw in the in the warrants you guys bought the used one. I saw the ninety five hundred dollars. So you guys did buy that used tool that Brad, Brad was talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's on order. I, yeah. I, mean, I don't know when it's supposed to be here, but it's on order. Okay. Went with these. It must be the warranty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did see that. That's a $6,600. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian, you don't need to do anything with the article except know that that's uh, in there. And then the town attorney will um, be blessing the whole warning at some point so that's just that's just agreement that you're going to ask voters for a loan uh in that dollar amount that and you which know. it will be reduced hopefully by trade um a little bit but i don't know if that's been talked about yet trade or sale yeah so <clears throat> one more question for me the fire chief does the hours on the fire calls now, or does somebody else do that? There was Brad or myself that put there put them in the computer. Well, that would be you. Well, for now, hopefully, somebody will help me. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. All well, good. Thank you. Congrats. Yep. All that stuff. Now it begins. Yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say it's been it's probably happening for a while. So <laughs> please feel free to approach the board if you need anything or want anything. Don't yeah, well, I'll talk to Matt if I need anything. You have any questions? I see him on the weekly. Yeah, twice a week. <laughs> for now. <laughs> yeah. So well, good. All right. Thank you. Cool. Thank, Thank you. Guys. you. Yep. Okay. MRGP, notice of intent to seek renewal of the town's permit to discharge pollutants. What's that? What does MRGP stand for? Not a clue. So the uh, a couple of years ago, you remember that the state of Vermont decided they need to tell every town how to maintain their roads, and they called it the Municipal Roads General Permit, or MRGP, and under the threat of imprisonment for the town select board chair. So that that got every, a few towns to fighting, and eventually uh, everybody relented and has agreed to be operating under this permit from the state because we discharge water to the state waters brooks and the, the word pollutants ron i think scares people but it's more of a it's water so it's really your it's your dirty water so Maybe i think it, it, it's like anything above 25 ntus <laughs> they call it is how they measure it yeah the the uh, permit certification that you will uh, brian will be signing for the town <laughs> which susan used to sign but the chairman of the uh, this board will sign this year uh, basically agrees that the road foreman and town administrator and select board and everybody will follow the state rules for control of erosion. Stone and banks, you know, stream bank um, ditches and grass and adding hydro seed to slopes and all that stuff during construction projects. Uh, Justin, there's a folder with 
um, a red sign here tab on just inside my office door there in the top for select board. So, Bill, before Brian leaves, he can sign it. You know, it's it's just the the vote the vote right now is to renew that permit. The only other option is to fight the state and say we're not renewing, we're not going to play. And most towns have just agreed to play. I guess is a good way to not fight. So, and we've done it for three or four years and we get the 17,000 a year in state money to help us, which is called the grants and aid program. And those pro those monies are applied to uh, compliance with the MRGP. So I'm, I'm recommending that we renew it and get it for five years and then he'll be back on your table again in five years. So we need a motion to, um... I will make a motion to renew the permit and have Brian sign. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any be opposed? Abstaining? The ayes have it. And let's see, annual highway mileage certificate for 2022, no mileage changes. Uh, and we got a vote on it. The mileage didn't go up. I'm pretty shocked at that with the price of fuel. No, this is just the actual road miles that we that we own or control. Oh, I thought that meant not fuel cost. Jesus, I am not getting anything tonight. <laughs> no, it's, that's their official. That's their official uh, form that every town has to sign by February. I can sign it, um, and I usually would sign it with the no change, which is what's happening this year. Uh, if there was a change to mileage, sometimes I'll ask the select board to sign it, but I, I can sign it on your behalf. I'm just, I'm just looking for authorization to sign it, just to let you know that's coming up and you have to file it and the deadline's coming up and I'll do that, just have a motion to approve the no change mileage report. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed abstaining? You ayes have it. Okay. Um, Yes, the mileage rate did go up. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's where my mind went. It's like counting brain limits. Okay, so investment recommendation from the town finance and administrative manager. So, yeah, she did a heck of a job on getting that she put together and stuff. Um, yeah. So from what I read of that, she's suggesting option four, which would be we invest a million dollars. I'm new to this. So my question would have been, are we are, are we in a position where we won't spend that million dollars for a whole year? I don't think it's a year. Is it? Yeah, it's 12 months. And option four was 12 months. Steps? Yeah. Well, option steps. one was a three-month hold. We were going to make about 2200 Option two was a six-month it looked like we were going to do about 4,600. Option three was nine months. <clears throat> if not in this package, I need it. Did you see it? You read it. Okay. What I was looking at was the percentage rate for four, six, and nine, 12 months. Yeah. Scenario four is four CDs at four months each. So they all mature at the same time before the end of this fiscal year. Okay. So maybe I, so I misread that. So it, it's, oh, yeah. it renews every four months. So, uh, well, no, she's, you can't take out more than 250 in a CD. So she's multiplying by four CDs to get the maximum into a four month term at the 2.75%. And then we'll, in May, we'll revisit this and see what you want to do for another round of CDs. Okay, so maybe I was misread. So the the right hand side, she had a little thing that said something. There was a three month, six month, nine month, or twelve month option. Yeah, th yeah, those are all the options. But she picked okay. number four on page okay. two. Yeah, on page two, it just says 
four or four months. I was concerned that that was the option on 12 months. I didn't think we'd have the money to do that. But it, now that we're talking four months. I'm in, I'm in agreement with that. Yeah. 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 Four okay. Four Sorry. No, but that, Matt, that's exactly the question that Jen and I had, you know, between capital projects and my construction schedules and, you know, holding back some for emergencies and all those things. So four month is really conservative. And if you wanted to go longer, you get into the more iffy guessing game. So it's a good first step. It's a good first step, I guess. I, I, I foresee us having the money for ARPA for four months alone, in my opinion. But so I, I'm all for four months. Especially because yeah. this is new for us, yeah. right? We're yeah. testing it out. So what do we, you want a motion? I'll make a motion that we take Jen's uh, suggestion of option four, investing the four months worth of monies. Second. Into the CD. Second. Okay, uh, you get a second. Okay, uh, any more discussion? And giving All her approval to sign for such. Yeah. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed, abstaining? The ayes have it. And uh, pass it along to, to her that I, I personally appreciate it. Yeah, I do. Yeah. The board appreciates it. Very much. So. <clears throat> okay. That's done. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, what's next? Um, the draft of the uh, FY 2024 town budget review update budget and tax rate projection. Uh, have we Mayor, gotten, have we gotten, have we finalized with like with the Mont County Sheriff's Department? Yeah, so since the last meeting, there was um, a a request to pick a number. The last dis board discussion was kind of a range, you know, three to eight or whatever. And Johnson and Wolcott decided in their meetings to go to 5%. So that's what you're looking at tonight is a 5% for patrol. Uh, Wolcott went five with Johnson. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mary Waltz is online. She, I think she's the only guest we have for the budget. Oh, okay. okay, and so there was no action on that. So, we'll set, so we'll talk to Mary. Good afternoon, Hi. Mary. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm just following up on the discussion we had on um, December 13 about um, making a request for um, putting something in the budget for Not in Hyde Park, and um, I think Ron forwarded to you my note, which is you know, pretty, pretty basic, but it's not very complicated. I think the issue I described to you is your, the budget process is ahead of our planning process. So um, we're going to start meeting and seeing what we can do um, to make plans for this coming season. But this is a good rough idea of certainly the line items of areas of things that we um, could use money for. Um, but some of them, you know, if if we can't come to I mean, the goat idea is just something that I have a, a thing about and I, I don't yet know what it looks like. But um, anyway, I think the note speaks for itself. And I talked to Ron about some potential sources of money, which um, I've put on there uh, and on the note. Um, Yeah. So, any questions? I, I mean, I, I feel like I'll just say this. I think I said this last time as well, but I, you know, I find it hard to keep things in my, you know, remember what I did a month ago, but um, that th this whole thing is coming from, you know, we're still kind of proving the case about the importance of this issue. Um, but everything that I'm experiencing and seeing is that, that this is, an important thing for the town to do. It's clearly a community issue. It's not an individual person's issue because now we doesn't respect boundaries and all of the work we're doing um, is on the roadsides that are maintained by the town. And um, that's the focus of our, our work. Um, and, and, and I think we've done a pretty good job getting um, 
lots of free stuff and free time from people. So now we're just trying to shore it up to see what we can achieve this next season. The biggest item, obviously, is the potential uh, program of using tactical use of herbicides. And that is not going to happen until I come back to the board with a proposal that's specific and clear and explains to you all the risks. Um, but I have to put it there because that's the important thing. I want to try and bottom out this next season. And now I'll stop speaking. Okay. Now you said this, this would go towards all the, all of just the town roads. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, that's where we're working, um, because that's the issue. That's the community issue. I mean, um, that isn't, sorry, that isn't to say that we haven't done some volunteer things with some people. Uh, I can think of a couple of instances where, um, uh, uh, I got together with a group of people and did a big cutting on, in their property, um, just as a sort of, uh, good goodwill spread the word spread the experience it was a it was a great learning thing and outreach program but it didn't cost anybody anything just time so i don't have any problem with that mary with the townspeople okay um, now does the state give you anything if she has a um, community event budget grants donation yeah, the, the truth is, Roland, I don't know yet at this point. I have connections into people who, well, Ron being the number one uh, connection, but um, the you know I know Emily Potter, the state for or the county forester, and um, I I have a couple of contacts now in private um, forester co conservation people who might be able to put me in some direction. But I'm guessing, yeah, the answer is I don't know yet. It, 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 well, it's the only thing I'm thinking, the state, <clears throat> the, the rail trail is not the towns. Okay, that belongs to the state. And what I've seen the last few years, the state has cut back on the towns a lot. And if this money comes available, I don't think I'd want to see it on that rail trail because They've cut our, we used to be able to jump on board with a salt. They cut that out. They've cut out a lot of stuff for the towns. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you there, Roland, because as I, as I think I've admitted to anybody who will listen to me about it, when I took that on, actually taking on that patch was a request of this town's road crew because it, that knotweed is a problem for visibility at that point in the road. And so... Uh, that's why we took it on, and um, and it, it's quite a big project. But I I completely agree with you. For example, I'd like to see some better signage there because it's such a great outreach, uh, an education spot, you know. And and every time we're working there, people stop and talk to us. But I I absolutely agree with you that that should be for the rail trail. And and Ron and I are both in touch with um, Jackie Casino, who's in charge of that. Um, so that's really more just my volunteer time that 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 goes toward, and there's definitely a limit. I don't care, but any money that comes from the town, I don't want to see it go to that rail trail because they give us grief about the roundabout up here, and they give us grief about the rail trail. Now that you know the town, the state's just cutting back so much on these towns. It's going to be terrible. Yeah, the unfortunate thing is they're not really doing anything about knotweed or any other invasive stuff, really. They're, you know, they're, they should get they're woeful. out there and start doing something. Yeah, I agree with you. And I do spend a bit of time trying to advocate for that. It's but... money for you people. I very much see what we're talking about here as um, uh, an absolute commitment to the town of Hyde Park maintaining um the di the diversity of the the plant life on the roadside protecting against unnecessary erosion and really making the case and spreading the learning about um about knotweed being a problem so that other people who have it on their land can learn from us and move right. on you know i agree with that taxpayers taxpayers money.
so is there nothing we need to vote on, right? Or is there? No, I think we're just going to add it to the yeah budget. Yeah, it's in in the budget that um, Justin handed out. You'll see uh, three thousand on the expense side towards the community event side. I think page five of your expense budget. Maybe it's the last one. Um, and then on the revenue side, there is a one thousand uh, dollar objective for Mary to sort of figure out and see if she can get there with whatever. Uh, with a new program like this, uh, it's really kind of a first first draft kind of shot. In an, and a year from now, if it gets legs, so to speak, as a sustaining committee with the funding, then we'll be having a discussion about those two numbers, the 3,000 on the expense and the 1,000 on the, on the revenue to see if those need to be adjusted. Good. Um, there was some conversation with Thelma's property. Did, did you make connection, Mary, Ron? Uh, yeah, I think I relayed the information that Mr. Um, RV. Ken, Mr. Ken was involved somehow and Mary was going to check that out. Mary was going to check that out, but I hadn't gotten an update from Mary yet. Yeah, sorry. I was speaking, but I was muted. I apologize. Um, uh, I got that information, which I appreciate very much, and I haven't yet had a chance to pursue it, but I, I will do because that, that knowing whether or not that piece of property could conceivably be mowed by goats would be... Um, you know, kind of determinative about whether or not we could do something on the gamble property because the gamble thing on its own is too small. Um, but if if the neighboring property wanted to be mowed by goats, and I can find a goat herder, then it's a it it opens up a real possibility to do something, which would be fun and cool. Yeah. Great, thank you, Mary. Yeah, thank you all for listening and um, thank, thank you again you. for doing this work. Yep. I'm going to sign off now. Okay, thank you, Mary. Um, let's see. Um, let's do the Krista Jones um, discuss the uh, $3,000 uh, bonus or uh, addition to her wages for the additional work. So it's supposed to be, we left it last week and we discuss it again this week. Yeah, the, uh, one of the requests was to confirm the insurance payments, which I sent around, which I think as of today, we've gotten 7,000 in insurance payments to offset the um, town clerk's wages because she's not working. So the insurance company sort of makes up that some some of the difference there for her not working. And then um, I think Susan mentioned something about she had she wanted to talk about it, but then she's not here. So I don't know how you want to handle that ish, that sort of request from her. What and, about I, and I, I never got an answer right, or confirmation if, if it was OK with Kim to wait until Kim is back before talking about that. I guess I don't remember where we left that piece, whether we do this after she gets back or whether you want to do it ahead of time. Well, I thought we had agreed to because we had discussed prior that we were going to wait until kim was back and then we were going to review everything is how i thought we left it and then did you ever figure out what we paid linda martin by chance that's right here oh sorry yep i haven't seen that either <laughs> and krista did know to me that there was a separate five thousand dollars budgeted for additional help okay Yeah, 
And then the minutes here it says the select board will discuss compensation for Krista Jones at the January 10th meeting. So. But I do remember what you said, though. Yeah. We, the sugar's down and see what. Well, and we had discussed that even prior to Kim coming, and we were, coming at us. Yeah. And we were discussing how long can we don't know it's indecisive on how long it's going to be out. For. Exactly. So it could be longer. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not. But. Yeah. Um, yep. I appreciate Chris's extra oh, work, yeah. but I also think that ahead of time we gave her a very healthy raise, much larger than anybody has ever received in this town at this time. So I just, it's not like it's not going anywhere. So. Just if she ends up being another month, I don't want to have to revisit this and vote again or vote again or vote again. So, in my opinion, so let's put it for discussion our first meeting for next month for February. Yes, then we'll know more from Kim exactly. Yep, like good that. plan. Yep. And those numbers were so that's saying that basically we we received seven thousand dollars as a delta from Kim's salary right now, and then we paid an additional forty four hundred for the helper. Correct. So there's basically twenty six hundred extra monies right now. At this point, no. Yeah. No. And, yeah. and 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 Linda's done for now. I believe she's not. I see. What yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think Linda's still on call if it gets busy for some reason. You're right. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't expect that before the end of the month. But there's not a meeting now, right? Yeah, I mean, I usually it's busier in another week or two because Kim and uh, is working on the town report and getting ballots ready and all those things. So I don't I don't know what if she's heard all that to Krista. But it's something we just started working on, uh, Krista and I. But usually there's extra hands around for the town report and for getting you know things posted around and get ready for the elections and getting ballot people lined up for town meetings. So February is pretty busy. I think that's why Kim probably picked the you know she had to pick a date. End of June, end of January is a good time to get sort of for the election at town meeting day. It gets busier. Petitions for office are due on the 30th. Uh, petitions for articles are due, I think, next week. If you want to have a, if somebody wants to have a special article. So it's pretty statutory up until the end of the month and through February. It's it's busy for the clerk to get ready for the election. So I don't know if, if Kim's back by then or if Linda would come back in February. I think with the 5,000 that justin mentioned is every year we have an auxiliary budget in the town budget for help at the town clerk's office for these kind of things so there is there is kind of a dual source there's the budgeted auxiliary plus the insurance coming in so Sorry, we all agree that we're going to wait until that mm -hmm. first meeting in february okay. and we'll discuss it further yep. <clears throat> okay and the Smith Triangle parcel donation. That was interesting. I was reading that today there, and it's gonna cost us more money to acquire it than it is to. So where are you at with it, Ron? Um, the select board decided no last time because the donor was asking for the town to pay money for a donation. I don't know if that's changed totally. Um, it's they're holding on the land. It's entitled to somebody in Canada. So there's a bunch of uh, foreign land transaction checkoff list that the attorney has to do, which increases the cost of a normal transfer. And I don't have an updated estimate from the town attorney. The family that owns the property, the, the I think the father died and the kids got the property kind of situation. Well, I, where'd you read about this, Brian? What's that? Where'd you read about this? Well, it runs sent out. To, I don't know. Did you send that just to me or did you? Let me see here. It should be right here in this. 
Yeah, this is a revisit from about a year ago when the select board decided to not accept the donation of this triangle piece of land at the top of Brook Road. Um, it's on, if you're familiar with the top of Brook Road on the opposite side of Centerville Road, there's a large culvert and a wetland beaver area. And the triangle is the inlet area of that culvert. But the transaction, the clear title due to a foreign title is, is more expensive. I just don't have the number to tell you from the town attorney what that would be. And then obviously right next to the Mennonites farm as you're headed to Eric Williams shop right there on the right. Yes, yeah, the low point there. Yeah. So it's on the if you're coming, if you're coming, if you're coming up Centerville Road. Okay, so I'm going. I'm at the other end. You go by. You go by Gardens. Yeah. Go by Gardens Farm. Come around the corner of the Mennonites Farm. Okay. And then turn right. Go down in the hole. There's a Big Beaver Pond on the left hand side. Beaver Dams. Oh, yeah. Yep, on yep, the yep, right hand yep. side, and then Eric Williams' house would be up in the back where Got they it. did all that work years ago. Where it all washed out. Got it. No, I know where you work. Okay. I forwarded you the email chain. Okay. Yeah, so that the only benefit I could see is not having to ask for an easement to replace that culvert at some point. That's really about the only municipal benefit I could see in the you know twenty year window. Although otherwise, it's just wetland and it, it. Somebody said it had a historic ice dam or concrete dam there that uh, there used to be an ice factory on Centerville Road, where they take the blocks of ice out of that area to sell to people before refrigerators. But that's 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 the only history I know. So the, the the question is, do you want to get a cost estimate from the town attorney, or or tell the donor that we're still not interested unless they pay one hundred percent of the cost for the donation, well, or uh, or not at all, <laughs> or just not interested? We're like. Not the highlight, but the other part, Derek. I don't know if it's part of the conversation. <clears throat> I don't think that you do. Mm -mm. There's really no value. Exactly. In it. Other than liability. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just the research. Probably cost. I'm guessing deed research stuff would be like two thousand mm dollars. -hmm. And voted the no anyway. So we, we don't need a vote on that, do we, Ron? No, I just, he's looking for, do you guys want to talk about this again? I could just relay that they're not, you, you guys aren't interested. There's no public benefit that you could see. And that's, that would be the end of it. And then if he wants to come back and meet with you guys, tell me what a great deal it is. I, I can always offer that, but. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't be wants to address the board again. And yeah. Maybe enlighten us on something we don't already right. you're know. You're saying no. Jesse saying no. Yeah. I'm saying no. Matt, you're saying. I don't see a benefit in it. Uh, no benefit, right? Benefit in it. So, uh, poll, of the board, the poll of the board is that we don't have no interest in it. I'll relay that and thank you for discussing it. This is the Eric Smith property. Uh, S Scott Smith is the one that called me. Uh, Eric J. Smith. Yeah, it might be the, fa the deceased father, maybe. Yeah, it shows up as two acres. Yeah, it's a triangle piece, including the road frontage. Is there part of a house on that? No, no house. It's just, uh, a, like I said, there's a big concrete. Oh, so it's on the left-hand side. I see. Yeah, the concrete dam you can see from aerial photo. Uh, so I have John Cloud as an owner. Yeah, and the fa the family that got it is Smith. Okay, yeah, the estates of John Cloud, blah, 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 okay. 0.33 acres. Yep. Okay. Okay. I see it. Yeah, there's that's definitely not something we want. Yeah. My opinion. Okay. Um, and then the authorization is 110,000 for the loan. Jen. 
Yeah, every every time we get involved with the North Hyde Park Eat and Fire Truck, we always approach the state treasurer's office to see if they're willing to give us a zero percent loan on their maximum amount, which is one hundred ten thousand, when you buy jointly with another town. So, even though we're even though we're only going to own half of that truck because Eden will own the own the other half, um, that still makes us eligible for the hundred and ten thousand at zero percent. So that's what's going on once the uh, promissory note is signed they're authorized to be signed the state treasurer's office will release the hundred and ten thousand uh so we have it when the payments due which right now brent lanfear is estimating about six months before the truck delivery the rest of the truck purchase will come from the um right now will come from the fire reserve So then I will make a motion to authorize Jen to sign for this loan when the time comes. Right. Yeah, well, that, that was part of my debate with uh, Jennifer today. It's like, well, the money will come and the payment will be due uh, the first $22,000 payment because it's five payments of 22,000 on the 110 will be due in December 23. So it's it, it really doesn't make a difference with 0% loan. Uh, we'll make the first payment about the, you know, just after the trucks delivered potentially, which is fine. Cause then we only have four years left on the loan. So <clears throat> it's, it's here or there on the, on the, when we get the money. So I think having her sign it and having the money here, uh, it'll earn some interest for us while we're waiting. Oh, okay. Okay. So then I make a motion for Jen to authorize Jen to sign the loan. For 110,000. Yes. Second. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed abstaining? Okay. Cut that all down. <clears throat> you see this note here? I don't know if she's asking for the serial number for somebody. The VIN number, if known, for the uh, vehicle, for the mini pumper. Is that for the new one? Yeah, that's known. That's known that Park's truck. That yeah. Oh, the new one? Oh, it's probably the old VIN number if it's not done yet, right, Ron? Yeah, they, they don't. They filled that out. That promissory note's filled out by them and sent to us. So the VIN number isn't available because they're still waiting for the chassis. <laughs> yeah, gonna have that. Right. I think this is a motion to look at that. Uh, motion made by Chassis to authorize Jen to sign the loan for 110000 for the purchase of the fire department truck. The Northside Park Eden truck. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Did we do the town budget? Well, no. review update and budget and tax rate. Not, the tax yeah, not really. Budget. Not really, but I can go through it pretty quickly. Um I handed out and Justin made copies of the sort of the cheat sheet, which is the tax rate projection sheet. Uh, if you want to pull that up, it has a little town logo in the top left. And you can get a good snapshot of where the budget is now at 3.16 million. And the offsetting non taxable, non property tax revenue of 424,000. All comes down to a tax rate of basically 91 cents or 0.9111. That that number compares to the current. Oops, yeah. So that's it's a draft mode because the numbers are right, but you'll see the bottom of that page has the wrong year. So that's it, those are nine, uh, FY24 proposed year of 9111, which is 3.74 percent more than the current tax year even though it says 23, it's actually 24 proposed. So I think we're we're doing okay if you're okay with the 
you know, about a 4%, 3.75%. I expect some changes um, in, in some of the expense lines still for your next meeting on the 24th, but I'll highlight those. Um, I did adjust the grand list increase to 2%. I think that's a real number based on some of the construction that is going on around town. So on the expense side, which is, well, sorry, let's go to the revenue page, which should be next. On the revenue page, we tuned that up a little bit. I had Jen look at the actual 22 column and the proposed 24 column. So I think we're feeling pretty good with those numbers. I don't have the updated state aid to highways for next year. Sometimes we'll get a glimpse of that before the end of January to know if they're gonna hold at that 138,000 for highways or whether the state legislature wants to increase that. We typically don't increase that um, um, just because the legislature will keep discussing that all the way through May. Um, and that's really our best guess type uh, number. Everything else we've adjusted, if you see the adjustments going up and down a little bit on the change column on the far right, a lot of those are based on the actual expenses from 22 and some projections uh, by looking at current activity in 23 and then trying to guess what's going to happen over the next you know, 15 months. So it's really sort of an art, I guess, more than a technical uh, projection. The question I had on revenues is, and I sent it to Amy Olson tonight. She's got a trustee meeting, but, uh, and I don't know how many board members were involved with this, but before the library had a reserve fund, the library would be having some interest, investment interest, grants, other revenue, donations and things that would come in to support library services. And you'll see that column in the, um, FY22 column, the 7,000 for interest and 8,000 for grants and so on. <clears throat> All of that is to offset the expenses in library. The 12,000 you'll see on the FY24 is offset and goes right into the library reserve, which is on the last page of your expense budget. You'll see the reserve budgets or, or appropriations. And, I, and the idea was that the investment interest in library would, would cover that $12,000 uh, transfer, if you will, to their reserve. And it didn't do that in FY22, it was $7,000. So I asked Amy what the trustee's response would be because when the library reserve was set up, it was meant to be sort of an in and out where their investment interest of 12,000 or more some of that would get saved directly to the new library reserve. And we are transferring the 12,000, but, what, but what's offsetting that at this point? And Amy didn't know, she wanted to talk to the trustees and I expect to um, get an update from her tomorrow after their meeting tonight. So that was one of the oddities, I guess, that I didn't have an answer for. But for now, we'll keep it at 12,000. One response might be to reduce that to 8,000 to match their investment income. The expense side, which is the five page report for expenses, uh, if you turn to the last page of that, uh, where you see the total budget, you'll see that 12,000 for library reserve, which is a transfer that Jennifer does during the course of the new fiscal year after July 1st, along with those other transfers to reserve so that we can uh, keep funding those. It would be good if if the two that are sort of behind right now, which are highway capital and fire vehicle, could be accelerated. But obviously, if you accelerate those more than what's in this budget, you're going to get over, you know, four percent increase in tax rate and so on. And we could do that. I just the current draft is headed towards your goal of three percent. So it's three and a half percent basically. So you, you, you all can make that decision if you want to push that three and a half percent a little higher and put more money in capital or 
just leave it the way it is. The other line that you want to look at in highway is the paving line, which we reduced from 240. Oh, sorry, you reduce that um, from 245 to 180,000. That number really needs to be around 300,000 to keep up with a, a decent paving program. And that number should go back up once we dispense with the loan on the center road. And so that, as soon as we could figure that out, I've asked Jen to see if there's any way we can accelerate payments on the center road and be done with that. And we're still looking at that. Uh, right now, the 143,000 is basically your principal and interest on center loan. If that was paid off, then you could roll that back up into the paving and get closer to your 300,000, uh, which is what was one of our goals from a bunch of years ago on, on annual paving. Um, so those that's the, I think those are the highlights with the big numbers. The town administration budget, we've talked about wages and some adjustments there with, with my salary, with uh, planning and zoning and board clerk, as well as, you know, Kim's salary and having heard that auxiliary line, that's all that's covered up there are the uh, Jennifer and Ron and Justin and Krista and Kim plus auxiliary people. And I haven't quite, I guess I haven't quite heard enough from the board on the uh, planning and zoning uh 24 hour person position we talked about last if you want to make that a solid yes we're going to do that and make it happen so the person can focus on planning and zoning the town administrator job could remain uh but the funding for that would shift to uh, arpa eligible grant eligible administration and those kind of things which we typically just take for you know, extra money, I guess, if you want to look at it that way. We budget full time for the town administrator and the extra grant reimbursements just go to the unassigned fund balance. You could, um, and this is the idea, is that you would focus that position on grants and administrative reimbursement so that you could take some of the budgeted money and apply it to uh, planning zoning person and and not really impact the overall budget. So that's that's where we are headed is to keep that wage and salary line for general government about the same and and backfill it with grant reimbursement money from the work that the town administrator is doing. So maybe it's a 32 hour position plus grants um, and that person would support uh, the planning and zoning administrator as well as support the finance manager. So you'd have a pretty strong team, I think, going forward. I just, I just want to make that clear that that's the that's the concept within this budget. Um, and if if everything works out okay, I think you know advertising for planning and zoning person would would be in May probably, and have some kind of hiring process in June for the new budget, and the town administrator with. Uh, kind of thinking about that position and if if I continue in some kind of role or if I don't I think that's an that's a whole nother discussion um, so if you want to advertise for both in May and then I would I could stay on for training you know those it's kind of a transitional discussion that we started back in the fall but the overall goal was to not have a huge impact on the on the operating budget here too increase taxes and things like that so that highway man that fifth man if we go that way that's that's in that budget right there right, right now. yeah the highway budget includes the fifth person plus retaining fifteen thousand for auxiliary help during the summer or winter you know if they if there's a bad storm that mark would have fifteen thousand to call Maybe call some for um in the summertime with the mowing yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, and, and from time to time he'll call in extra help for moving gravel or sand or you know yeah. uh, if there's a storm event or whatever. He might, you know, at least he won't. He'll have that option to manage the fifteen thousand for those uses. Without taking away from that fifth man. <laughs> right. No. Exactly. So. <laughs> Which is the point of hiring. 
yeah, the fifth person, we just a regular, regular union shop position and, and Mark would, uh, and a starter position. We don't have, a, we don't have a experience wage in there of, you know, that is really a starter truck operator, equipment operator position. So what do we have in here? I'm, I'm just, uh, I've been hearing about other town budgets and the increases they're making to wages. And I feel like we're not really there. I'm, I don't know. I'm just. Yeah, just... no, we looked, we looked at and what we're waiting for and what we've been watching is the, um, the CPI, which is just a gauge. It's one of the pieces you guys follow. The new report comes out on Wednesday from the Department of Labor to see if that trend is flattening out, you know, kind of keeping at the six, seven percent, or if it's dropping more. I mean, we don't know. Five percent is in this proposal with the three percent for the union uh, employees that are, you know, kind of locked in for the contract purposes. But so that's that's what's in the budget. If you wanted to change it to anything else, that's you know, easy to do, and I can show you the new numbers if you want to go to six or seven or go down to four, whatever, you, whatever you're thinking is. It's, so it's five percent. You you did five percent. That's what we did. Is that what you well, said? for yeah, for the draft purposes, we put in five. Originally, we were thinking three to seven, and I just split the difference and put five in this draft, so you see what this five percent does. Okay. And we can do the same thing for any other percentage that you want to see, to you know, to see what the overall tax rate increase would be. Well, that's good. Yeah, so it's up it's up to you to what you want to see. If you have a scenario that you want to see, I can do those pretty easily. Yeah, the other the other option. Um, which is sort of an interesting option. You could have a uh, figure out what the difference is between two numbers, let's say five and some other number, and have that money reserved, you know, either through an ARPA appropriation if you need it, because the inflation starts to go the other way and we're eight or nine percent by July. Right. And and make the adjustment, or maybe the inflation keeps dropping and maybe it's four, four and a half percent by July or five percent. You know, so it's it's kind of hard to predict that when it's moving so quickly, but yeah. that that is an option. Keep keep the five as your floor, but right. know that you might need to access ARPA money for you know a July one adjustment, which is what you did this year when you made those special adjustments. You, you did that already during the current year. Right. We do have ARPA money. We have to to balance the wages for a year, whatever. Right. Yeah, right. You could take that approach as long as you have the ARPA money. You could say, yep, we're gonna we're gonna keep 10, 15,000 in our pocket for uh, something we don't know for July. In my opinion, I'd rather stay that than to, to burden the taxpayers a bunch of money. You know, that's kind of what ARPA's for, your balance. Right. It's but it's supposed to be giving towns a chance to give a couple year breather from the COVID experience. So there's nothing we gotta vote on right now. We're just no, no, you'll have a the next step is one more work meeting, which is the 24th, and then you'll have a, a vote towards the end of January just to yeah. make it official before it goes to the printer. Ron, on the outside agency stuff, just because I don't know how that works, did they is that automatic or did they come to us every year and ask for the same money? Because like I noticed. <laughs> Only one that kind of went up a little bit was home health. And then there's one that didn't, that's zero. So I just didn't know how that worked. Yeah, no, I can give you a quick summary. All the listed agencies that are printed in the town report have gone through some kind of uh, voter approval process. So they, okay. the new people get a special article to be added to the list. And they also get an article when the budget request increases. Got it. Okay. The other time, the other thing is when the agency says, "Oh yeah," and that that's exactly what's happening to the um, 
Lamoille Restorative Center is zero because they want to uh, go to 2,500, which is a special article for the voters to decide that much of an increase. If the voters vote it down, they'll get zero. If they vote it in, they'll get 2,500. Is, is this money always spent? Yeah, we, tra we transfer all the money to active agencies in November. Okay. If the if the agency you know dissolves or goes away, we we'll, we keep the money. We did that once with the, <clears throat> men, the mentor program had a year with no service due to COVID, and um, they said to keep the money that year. So that went into the unassigned fund balance for the town. Okay. But yeah, they are they are recurring unless somebody okay. makes a motion to change it at town meeting day. Somebody could pull out a service and say that service doesn't it doesn't do it for me. We got to take their five hundred out. That could happen from the floor. Oh, okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yep. That makes sense. It's overall, it's about a penny on the tax rate. Right. <laughs> what do you think? I'm sorry. Overall, not much on the tax rate, but I just didn't know how it worked. I didn't know if they had to write in every year to ask for it or how it worked. I was wondering the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we get a, we do get sorry we do get an annual report from everybody, which is part of the deal to get relisted. Gotcha. Okay, <clears throat> okay so we're revisited in uh, our next meeting. We'll vote on it at that time. Down warrants. <clears throat> Did you do number eight, the goals for 2023? Not really. No, no. I don't know why I had to check. Maybe I double checked it, but the goals. Yeah, yeah why, while you guys do the warrants, so we can just, you can think about what I'm talking about. How's that? We'll do a double. Warrants, warrants are all done. Yeah. Okay. The last so, one. so on the goals, usually what happens is i take notes from your meet, meeting minutes and if there's things in there that you've talked about we should do this someday we should do that someday i'll put those on as your goals for the next year and individually you could all have your own goals and ideas for next year which is the current let's say the current calendar year 23 that you'd like to see done in hyde park and that could be anything that you're interested in and that's would be up to you to convince the board members that that is a board goal so that it can be put in the town report so if there is no discussion on something that you're like hey i got on this board to see this happen then it, it's really incumbent on that board member to go to the full board and say can we put some energy into this and get the board to put that on that list at the town you know in the town report so when you if you want to refresh on the town report it's it's the last paragraph and you can read that and see what you guys want to do for the 20, you know, 23 calendar year. And then we'll print that for the voters. You can reduce it to two goals if you wanted to. I mean, I, it's just, it's really your report, but that's what I've done in the past is just look through the minutes and see what you said that you wanted to get to someday kind of thing. I think the financial statements was one of the ones we talked about in the past, you know, yeah, doing more with that. So, and I don't need those, but 24th would be a good time to get any suggestions resolved at the board. Uh, I'll be starting to work on the town report right after that. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed, standing? No, he's having. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes on 1220. Second. Discussion? <clears throat> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Nice have it. Thank you. 
And just an update on the uh, Manash parcel. I got hold of Howard. I sent him a text message and I didn't get a response. And then so I decided to call him and I called him and, and I talked with him. And Howard is now indecisive if he wants to sell the property. Howard was telling me that he's got the um, Chestnuts. chestnut trees up there <clears> that he wants to re integrate back into the state and stuff. And he's got, I don't know how many, I remember right, in the thousands. And uh, he might use the property for that. And so he said he'd get back to me and let me know uh, what he decides. So that's where we're at with it. So. He wants to do what with the chestnut trees? I'm sorry, yes, chestnut. Yeah. He wants to do what with them? He wants to plant them on the, he's thinking about planting them on the property, but he wants to reintegrate them back into the state because there isn't, isn't any in the state or isn't that many because they just get. So how it is not interested in moving forward the purchase and sales agreement at this point? Is that what I'm getting? Yeah. What, yeah, what you're getting is that he's indecisive. He hasn't made up his mind if he wants to do it. Is or there not. anything from Howard that we can get that in writing? That's a great idea. So that the town people of personal investment or personal interest, whoever has personal interest in us owning this, can have that from him. The indecisive part? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can try to reach out to him and see if he'll... Even shoot an email? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know he's not very... He didn't, he didn't respond. To, he said he had received my email, but he didn't respond back to me. And it wasn't until I called him and uh, I uh, didn't talk to him that way. So I'll just try to call him tomorrow. And, just something that and, protects yeah. us. I mean, this isn't, I mean, obviously we're doing our due diligence at this point now. There was, mm -hmm. there was some, some town people who were very invested in it. And obviously we've talked we about some finances. Yeah. We, we agreed to relook at it. I just want to make sure that I mean, kind of everything we talked about for a year is kind of coming tenfold. I mean, it's still some of more of this. Yep. Well, and it's been such a he said, she said. That's right. So it would be nice to have something in writing from Howard. Yep. You know, right. saying that he's in, he is in this nice about this time. So that, and it's not you telling us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that, I not, I mean, I trust I you, but <laughs> if that's fair, so it would be yep. good. Will there be a special meeting in January? We're going to do all in a second meeting for approval of the minutes and not minutes. The budget? budget? Yeah. yeah. No, I think it falls in. The 24th. Right? Approving the budget falls in in time for town meeting, right? Yeah, there's some dead. Yeah, there's some deadlines to come up. So, like next week is the deadline to add special articles to the town meeting warning. So, if that passes, I think there's a a chance to amend the article through the 20th or something. So I think all the statutory deadlines might be done by the 24th, okay. uh, which which ideally would then line up with your ability to approve the budget and find out that whatever that new tax rate projection is still good. And then we incorporate that into the town report. If there's anything pending, there's a drop dead deadline, if you will, of like February 1st. Right when I have to absolutely have the warning and the budget and all the reports to the printer kind of thing. So you do have a little bit of flexibility that last full week of January if you need it, but if we can get it done on the 24th, yeah, then that would be the first goal, but there is that chance that you'll have a special meeting just to come back and tweak something because something popped up. Yeah. Okay. Ron, off topic, off, off subject, but just, uh, I guess from the select board to your position, have you responded to the lady on, or on Diggins Road. To Diggins Road. The late time in regards to Tyler Maynard's, the questions we received. Yeah, no, yeah, no, we haven't done that yet because the, the way she wrote the request for responses, almost all of those are going to be addressed in the DRB decision because they're submitted as part of the DRB process. So we're going to incorporate those in the responses. Okay. 
And then if there's anything missing, I'll have to follow up with her on those. Yeah. I just, yeah, it's a two part. I just want to make sure that we're doing our diligence and. Yep. No, I appreciate that. There's two, they're basically two steps. Once the DRB issues their decision, I'll know what's not answered to her and then I can answer the rest. Because yeah. that meeting was like the night after our meeting, right? That DRB meeting? Yeah, yeah they, they're in their 45 day window to issue a decision. Gotcha. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So um, they'll, they'll get that done. Okay. Just just one other thing the, the beaver pond, did anything come of that? Like, is there is there anything on, like, I know that there's been Mary expressed her concern, but from a town yeah, perspective, the, that nothing lands on our, on our. No, that's, it happens quite often this time of year, especially just before winter, where we'll get uh, resident complaints about beaver activity that are infringing either on a private driveway or creating some kind of perceived risk. So the town highway crew goes out, they inspect it, they assess the risk, might notify the landowner that we're watching and they should be watching. And then we kind of let it ride. There's not a lot we can do when the issue is on private property. If it does start to fail, let's say there's an overflow of <clears throat> southern embankment, which it's not supposed to do, then uh, we do get more active on that kind of thing ourselves because that would impact the town road. The, the water is now supposed to flow south there. It's supposed to flow north. Yeah. So is, there's, there is there is limited stuff yeah. that we do do. Yeah. Center or center rail? Center. So keep eyes on it, Matt, and we'll do the same, I guess, for now. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, same by the thing, aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining. Good. <clears throat> Good.